part of her programme for government. And we have a strong record in Wales. City region deals in Cardiff and Swansea with a commitment to a North Wales growth deal. Investment in our railways with plans to modernise across Wales. And a fair funding formula, something that many had complained about for decades, but it was this Prime Minister who agreed a new funding settlement for Wales within her first six months in office. But this manifesto is about our future. And whatever plans we have, making a success of Brexit will be key. It's central to our economy, central to funding of our public services, and central to our future stability and security. At this time of change, change that could threaten the Union, it has never been more important to have a strong and stable leadership in the national interest. A Prime Minister that is ready to take the difficult decisions and ready to face 27 nations that could be lining up to oppose us. I have the privilege to introduce someone that is a true friend of Wales, a true champion of the Union, and someone that will always act in the interests of the whole of our country. Please welcome the Prime Minister. Thank you very much, and it's good to be here in Wrexham today with just 17 days to go until this crucial general election. Just 11 days after that, the European Union wants the Brexit negotiations to begin. The UK's seat at the negotiating table will be filled by, with, by me or Jeremy Corbyn. The deal we seek, negotiated by me or Jeremy Corbyn. There will be no time to waste and no time for a new government to find its way. So the stakes in this election are high. Our future prosperity, our standard of living, our place in the world, and the opportunities we want for our children and our children's children are either in the strong hand you grant me by supporting my candidates in this election or the weak hand of Jeremy Corbyn, backed by the Liberal Democrats, Plaid Cymru and the SNP, who don't want Brexit to succeed. It is your choice, your decision. Every vote for me and my team in this election will be a vote to strengthen my hand in the negotiations to come. Every vote for any other party, Labour, the Liberal Democrats, Plaid Cymru, is a vote to send Jeremy Corbyn into the negotiating chamber on our behalf. And that is the stark reality of the choice that we face, the choice we must focus on over the next 17 days. Because our future prosperity depends on getting the next five years right. That is why we need someone representing Britain who is 100% committed to the cause. Not someone who's uncertain or unsure, but someone utterly determined to deliver the democratic will of the British people. Because if we don't get this right, the consequences for the United Kingdom and for the economic security of ordinary working people will be dire. If we do, the opportunities ahead are great. Now, the Welsh Conservative Manifesto I launched today is a plan to make the most of the opportunities together. It is a plan to make Wales and our union stronger. For this manifesto, sets out a vision of Britain around which I believe we can all unite. It's the mainstream manifesto of a mainstream party determined to deliver for mainstream Britain. And to all those who work hard and make this country what it is, I say this. If you have a job but don't always have job security, I'm backing you. If you own your own home but worry about paying the mortgage, I'm backing you. If you can just about manage, but worry about the cost of living and getting your children into a good school, I'm backing you. 
If you feel you've been let down and left behind by politics and government for far too long, I'm backing you. And to all the decent men, women and families you meet on the streets of places like Wrexham, Bridge End, Cardiff and Newport and countless towns and villages across Wales and across the country, I'm backing you. To those for whom life is often much harder than many seem to think or realise, I'm backing you. To those who want to get on with their lives, to do their best for the children and to be given a fair chance to get on, I'm backing you. I'm backing those who want a more secure and full life. I'm backing those whose only wish is that their children will do better than themselves. And to those that look to their government and their politicians for a little help and support, I'm backing you too. Because too often in the past, ordinary working people have found the help and support they need just isn't there. And I know that sense of disenchantment is particularly acute here in Wales. We saw that when people here in Wrexham and across Wales chose to ignore the hysterical warnings of Labour, Plaid Cymru and Liberal Democrat politicians in Cardiff Bay and voted to leave the EU. We see it now in the way those same politicians refuse to respect that vote as they try to find new ways to put obstacles in our way. And the cause of that emerging gulf is clear. It is because the Labour Party has taken people in Wales for granted for decades. <laughs> Just as it has, in fact, in other communities across Britain. They've been in charge in Cardiff Bay for nearly 20 years. Some parliamentary constituencies have returned nothing but a Labour MP for a century or more. Welsh Labour have come to believe they have a right to govern. Yet during their time in charge, the performance of Wales' vital public services has fallen further and further behind. The Welsh NHS is falling because, failing because Labour cut its budget. The A&D waiting time and urgent cancer treatment targets haven't been met for nearly a decade. Wales, its schools are falling further and further behind the rest of the United Kingdom. It's little wonder that Welsh voters chose to send a message to their politicians in the referendum last June. That should have been a wake-up call, but it wasn't. Labour, Plaid Cymru and Liberal Democrat politicians ignored Wales instead. Worse, they closed ranks with Plaid Cymru propping up Labour in Wales in order to defend the status quo, as they're determined to do in Westminster too. That would put Jeremy Corbyn in power in a weak and unstable coalition of chaos. And you don't negotiate the right Brexit deal for Britain from a position of weakness. Jeremy Corbyn's coalition of chaos would deliver higher taxes, higher debt and higher unemployment. Labour's policies may have been written by Jeremy Corbyn in London, but the people of Wales will get the bill. But it's not just that Jeremy Corbyn is too weak and shambolic to get the right deal for Britain in Europe. It's not just that his fantasy manifesto would leave families across Wales picking up the bill. It's also that even traditional Labour supporters, people like those here in Wrexham and across Wales, who've loyally given the Labour Party their allegiance for generations. People taught by their parents and grandparents that Labour was a party that shared their values and stood up for their community. They look at what Jeremy Corbyn believes and are appalled. They see a party that once believed in hard work, now headed by Jeremy Corbyn, who wants to crush aspiration and desert those who hope for a better life. A party that once stood for our union of nations, now headed by a man who is willing to collaborate with separatists in order to get into power. A Labour Party that first established our independent nuclear deterrent to keep our country safe, now led by a man who wants to get rid of it 
and even talks about abolishing the army. The prospect of him walking through the door of number 10, flanked by an avowed Marxist like John MacDonald and an incompetent Diane Abbott, <laughs> all propped up by the Liberal Democrats, Plaid Cymru and others, should scare us all. The The risk is real and the stakes are high. A loss of just six seats will cost my government our majority and create a hung parliament. Just six fewer MPs means a hung parliament in which the major parties, minor parties, will flock to prop Jeremy Corbyn up. That will deliver nothing but chaos. It means Jeremy Corbyn imposed as Prime Minister propped up by the Lib Dems, Plaid Cymru and SNP, all of whom oppose the decision to leave the EU and want to fight to keep us in. And who knows what deals Jeremy Corbyn will do to get their support, because we know he would do anything to get their support. And after the weekend, we now know the tactics he is prepared to adopt to get into number 10. He has no strong plan for Britain, which takes on the country's long-term challenges, like I have. No, he wants to sneak over the line by manipulating the fears of old and vulnerable people and falsely claiming that families will lose their house as a result of our social care policy. That is shameful, and it is a shameful abdication of responsibility. So today, I want to put an end to Jeremy Corbyn's fake claims and clarify any doubts about our social care policy and the family home. My manifesto is honest and upfront about our challenges. It includes plans to strengthen the social care system with more and sustainable funding to cope with the long-term pressures caused by the fact that we are an ageing society. Jeremy Corbyn wants to duck this reality and play politics. But there will be two million more people over 75 years old in Britain over the next decade alone. Our social care system will collapse unless we make some important decisions now about how we fund it. That is why we have to act. And it is why, to give people security, we included in our plans measures to make sure nobody has to sell the family home to pay for care. And we also said that we would protect £100,000 of your savings. So however expensive your care, you can pass something on to your family. Let's be clear. This plan replaces the existing system, where people often get poor quality care and stand to lose almost all their savings and assets, including the family home. This plan addresses the worry people have when they have a loved one with a long-term condition and they don't know how they're going to afford to care for them. So these are good and sensible plans. They provide the beginning of a solution to social care without increasing taxes on younger generations. And I should say, we are the only party in this election prepared to face up to the reality of our ageing society and offer a long-term solution. But since my manifesto was published, the proposals have been subject to fake claims made by Jeremy Corbyn. The only things he has left to offer in this campaign are fake claims, fear and scaremongering. So I want to make a further point clear. This manifesto says that we will come forward with a consultation paper a government green paper. And that consultation will include an absolute limit on the amount people have to pay for their care costs. So let me reiterate. We are proposing the right funding model for social care. We will make sure nobody has to sell their family home to pay for care. We will make sure there's an absolute limit on what people need to pay. And you will never have to go below £100,000 of your savings so you will always have something to pass on to your family. And what is Jeremy Corbyn's plan? 
He promises a nonsensical fantasy policy that can only be funded through massive tax rises on younger generations. In fact, just recently, he threatened to increase the basic rate of income tax for millions of people from 20 to 25 per cent to fund social care. That tells you everything you need to know about Jeremy Corbyn's answer to the problem. The alternative is that he sticks to the status quo, which too often provides poor care and leaves old and vulnerable people having to sell their family homes. This manifesto. Our manifesto provides a better way. With it, I'm leading Britain, while Mr Corbyn is simply scaremongering among the elderly and the vulnerable. It is a plan for a stronger union and a stronger Wales. A plan to respond to and deliver on the concerns of ordinary working people everywhere. A plan to build a country that works for everyone, not just a privileged few. It is a detailed programme for government, rooted in the hopes and aspirations of ordinary working people in towns and cities across the country. A clear plan to meet the big challenges we face together. Because unlike the other parties, we are being upfront and honest with the British people about the scale of the task we face. That's what leadership is about. Not ducking the big decisions, painting grand and fantastical visions, pretending you can have something for nothing and no difficult decisions need to be made. Leadership means being straight with people about the challenges ahead and the hard work required to overcome them. And that is what this manifesto does. It sets out the five great challenges faced by our country. One, the need for a strong economy. Two, responding to Brexit and a changing world. Three, tackling enduring social divisions. Four, responding to an ageing society. And five, facing up to fast changing technology. And it sets out what we will do to address each one. And these are challenges that we all face right across our United Kingdom. And the lesson of Britain's history is that we all do best when we tackle challenges together, united. That's how we've overcome obstacles in the past, and that is how we will make a success of our future. In setting out our plan, we're offering a vision for our United Kingdom, not just for the next five years, but for the years and decades beyond. A country where everyone has the economic security they need and the chance to live a secure and full life. A prosperous country where each generation can do better than the last. But that all starts with getting the right Brexit deal, one that works for the whole United Kingdom. When I sit down with the Prime Ministers, Presidents and Chancellors of Europe, I will do so as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. When I fight for the best deal, it will be a deal that works for the whole United Kingdom. And when I talk about a better future for our country, I mean the whole United Kingdom. Because unlike Jeremy Corbyn, I believe heart and soul in this great union of nations. And if you give me your backing to represent you at the negotiating table in Europe in the months ahead, I will fight for every person in this United Kingdom, young and old, rich and poor, city, town, country, and all the villages and hamlets in between. It is my fierce determination to get the right deal for every single person in this country. And every vote for me and my team in this election will strengthen my hand in the negotiations and help me deliver the right deal for Britain. A vote for anyone else is a vote to send Jeremy Corbyn to represent us in Europe instead. Because it may say Labour, Liberal Democrat or Plaid Cymru on the ballot but it's Jeremy Corbyn that gets the vote. And if we get Brexit right, if we are strong in our negotiations with the EU, we can do more to build a stronger Britain and a stronger Wales here at home. Too often in the past, UK governments have tended to devolve and forget. The government I lead will put that right. That is why this manifesto contains clear commitments to spend spread opportunity and prosperity beyond London and the South East and to improve the economic security of people here in Wales. Why it includes a specific commitment 
to bring forward a North Wales growth deal, connecting North Wales with Northern England to encourage cross-border working, building on the success of the Cardiff City deal and Swansea Bay City deal that I signed in South Wales just a few weeks ago. It's why we're committed to bringing down the barriers to trade and commerce between South Wales and the wider UK by scrapping the tolls on the seven crossings for good, helping 25 million drivers who use the crossings every year and providing a £100 million boost to the local economy. It's why we will introduce a new UK shared prosperity fund, replacing ineffective and restrictive EU structural funds with a new targeted scheme whose sole purpose will be to reduce the inequalities that exist within and between the four nations of our United Kingdom. And it's why, as we leave the European Union, we will ensure that power sits closer to the people of the UK than ever before. That is why, as powers are repatriated to the UK, we expect to be able to increase the decision-making powers of the Welsh Government, as long as no new barriers to living and doing business within our own union are created. It's why the government I lead will ensure the modern industrial strategy that we are pioneering will benefit people, towns and businesses across Wales. That will help to create the high-skilled, high-paid jobs of the future and give our young people every chance of getting on and leading a full and happy life. As Prime Minister of this United Kingdom, that is what I want for everyone in our country. That is because of a simple truth. Across the United Kingdom, we may be four nations, but at heart we are one people and we achieve more together. We all have a stake in each other's success. We all have a stake in our shared future. That is why this election is so important. Because this election, more than any other, is about the long-term future of our country. Not just about the next five years, but the years beyond. Not just about our future, but the future of our children and our children's children too. We can get the best possible deal from Brexit. We can redouble our efforts to make things better here at home. And we can show that with hard work, with a clear vision and the right plan, a mainstream, active, determined government can deliver a better, more secure future for ordinary working people across this land. We need strong and stable leadership to do it. There are just 17 days to go. 11 days after that, the Europeans want the Brexit talks to begin. And the UK's seat at the negotiating table will be filled by me or Jeremy Corbyn. The deal we seek, negotiated by me or Jeremy Corbyn. There will be no time to waste and no time for a new government to find its way. So focus on that choice. Support my candidates here in Wales. Give me the strong hand I need to deliver Brexit. Give me that strong hand and I will deliver for Britain. Give me your support. And with confidence in ourselves and a unity of purpose in our country, we can and we will go forward together. Thank you. Now, I'll take some questions from uh, the media. Laura. Um, thank you, Prime Minister. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News. Um, you have today, again, and repeatedly all the way through this campaign, attacked Jeremy Corbyn for being uncertain and unsure, to use your phrase. But you have just announced a significant change to what was offered in your manifesto, saying there will now be the possibility of a cap on social care that was not in the plans that was announced just four days ago. 
That doesn't look so strong and stable, Prime Minister, does it? It looks rather like panic in the face of opposition. And can you tell us today where the cap on social care costs will be set to set families' minds at rest? Well, first of all, what we are doing and what we set out in our manifesto is a long-term plan for actually securing a sustainable future for social care in this country. So I said if you just look at the figures of the numbers, even the number of over 75-year-olds that will be uh, 2 million more within the next decade, our social care system will collapse unless we address this problem. And we can't leave it to the future. We have to start dealing with it now. That's why I want to fix it and I'm going to fix it. And the plans that we set out were very clear in the manifesto. You can look in the manifesto, Laura. I think it was page 64 or 65. We said we'd issue a green paper. And of course, within that green paper, we'll be consulting on the details of the proposals and the principles that we have set out. What is important is that we have seen over the last few days Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party trying to scare vulnerable and elderly people by telling them and uh, trying to suggest that they would lose their family homes to pay for their care. Nobody is going to have to pay for their care. Nobody is going to have, while they are alive, nobody is going to have to lose their family home. We will ensure that people are able to pass on savings to their children. That is proposals that we have put forward. I think it is the right way forward because it is the right way to deal with this problem that we all face. And we need to deal with it now. <clears throat> uh, Robert Skye. Robert Nisbet from Sky News. Um, you talk about a coalition of chaos, but isn't this a manifesto of chaos now? What else are you going to clarify within the next few days? And also, what message do you think this is sending out to those uh, prime ministers and chancellors around Europe that you are prepared to be so flexible uh, with what you originally set down in stone? I think the message that our manifesto sets out is that as a party and as a leader, uh, I and, and uh, we, the party, are prepared to be honest with people about the challenges that we face and are prepared to set forward the hard decisions that have to be taken, but a way forward that ensures we are looking after the interests of ordinary working people across this country. And I think what people will see across this country is that they do have a choice. They have a choice between Jeremy Corbyn being propped up by votes for any other party in this country or a government led by me, which will provide that strong and stable leadership, which will ensure that we're being honest with people about the challenges we face and have a plan to fix those. That's the important thing. We will fix those challenges. We will address them. And we will also build a stronger Britain and a better future. Emily. Prime Minister Emily Morgan, ITV News. You say that you are prepared to take the difficult decisions, but you have just buckled under pressure over your social care plans. Isn't this U-turn really just a cynical attempt to stop voters leaving you in droves? Look, first of all, let's be clear. We have not changed the principles that we set out in the manifesto. We're very clear about the principles on which this system will uh, operate and will be based. What we have done is clarified that in the green paper, which will be a consultation document, we will have a limit, upper limit, absolute limit, on the amount that people will pay for care. But the basic principles remain absolutely the same as when they were put in the manifesto and announced last week, that nobody is going to have to pay for their care while they're alive, that nobody is going to have to have their family home sold while they're, uh, while they're living in it, uh, and that they will, everybody will be able where they have that, to pass £100,000 onto their families. That's four times the limit that currently exists at the moment. This is a good uh, arrangement. It ensures that people can pass savings to their families. It ensures they have the peace of mind. Rather than sitting there, month after month, worrying about the money that's going out of their bank account to pay for their care, and worrying about what's going to happen in the future, this takes that worry away from people but it also ensures that we have a sustainable system for funding social care for the future. That's the challenge we need to address. 
We're the only party that is doing it. Michael. Michael Crick, Channel 4 News. I don't recall a U-turn on a manifesto in any election campaign. Now we've had national insurance and this. As Margaret Thatcher might have said, you turn, or didn't say, you turn if you want to, the lady is for turning. Doesn't this show that you are really weak and wobbly, not strong and stable? Can you give us an idea of what the cap will be? 100,000? 200,000? Half a million? Don't the people of this country have a right to know what the cap will be? We have not changed the principles of the policy that we set out in our manifesto. Those policies, those policies remain exactly the same. There will be aspects of how this operates that we will consult on through the Green Paper. We were honest that we were going to have a Green Paper and that we would be consulting people on how the system operates. What we have done, which other parties have singularly failed to do, is to recognise the challenge that we face, to respect the needs and concerns of the British people, and to provide a long-term plan for sustainable social care, which means that elder, elderly people in this country won't have to worry about how their social care will be paid for in the future. Now, do we have the Daily Post here before I go to the other? Yes. Uh, sorry. Shane Brennan, Daily Post. What guarantees can you give to uh, Welsh farmers and manufacturers that they will have access to uh, a tariff-free market after Brexit? Well, we want to ensure that we negotiate a comprehensive free ta trade agreement with the Euro remaining European Union. We want that. I mean, we uh, obviously will be working to have as tariff-free and frictionless uh, a trade arrangement with the rest of the remaining sta member states of the European Union after we leave the EU. What we will also provide for Welsh farmers and for farmers across the United Kingdom is we will be able across the United Kingdom to decide a support system for farming that actually works for Welsh farmers, for farmers across the rest of the United Kingdom. It won't be a system somebody else has devised for a, a wider group. It will be for us to be able to have that system of support for farmers and to ensure that support that is being provided is as effective as possible. Chris. Chris, Chris Hope, The Telegraph. Two quick questions, Prime Minister. Will, can you answer yes or no to this question? Will anything else in the manifesto change between now and June the 8th? And the second question, <laughs> quickly, is why, as Home Secretary, did you grant asylum to the ma Libyan man who was later arrested by police for the murder of Yvonne Fletcher? Well, on the, on the latter point, there are rules uh, about the, how asylum is, uh, is granted, and uh, any decisions that are taken are taken uh, legally and in accordance with the law of this country. Um, and on the first question, the one, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. We are offering a long-term solution for the sustainability of social care for the future. Uh, we are ensuring that people, elder people, will not have to worry. Uh, they will be able to ensure that their care, whether it's in the home or for them to go into a home, is being paid for, and they won't have to worry about those bills month after month after month and they will have the confidence of knowing that they can pass £100,000 of savings on to their children. Nothing has changed. We will consult on how the system operates, and we will do that through a green paper. Uh, anybody else? Yes, sorry, I can't see who. I think that's the last hand that I saw up, so. Hi there, um, Jessica Elgott from The Guardian. Um, it, this, if, if, in case I'm missing something, this tax, or this dementia tax, uh, would apply to someone who dies a longer death from dementia. But if you uh, die a longer death from cancer, you would have an inheritance, the inheritance tax threshold is a million pounds, whereas it reduces to 100,000 in this case. That's still the case, isn't it, even with a cap? Look, I'm sorry, you're using terms that have been used by the Labour Party to try and scare people in this country. Um, this, is, this is a system that will ensure that people who are faced with the prospect of either requiring care in their own home or needing to go into a home for care, are able to see that support provided for them and don't have to worry on that month-by-month -month basis about where the funding is coming from. They won't have to sell 
their uh, family home while they're alive. They won't have to uh, be worrying, as I say, about those sums of money going out of the bank account each month, and they will be able to pass savings on to their children. This is, this is a policy which ensures sustainability for our social care system going into the future. And we need that because our system will collapse with our ageing society unless we do uh, take the decisions we need. As I said when I was speaking, the only suggestion that Jeremy Corbyn made about paying for social care was to put up the taxes, the basic rate of tax, from 20p to 25p, so younger generations would have been paying for that. Thank you.